ஸ்ரீ துவைத்த மத நிர்தாரண சார்வபௌமா அட்ரிபியூட் டு புராண பிரஜா அண்ட் ஆனந்த தீர்த்தா தத்துவாத மத்வாச்சாரிய பய ஹம்புல் டிவோட்டி Vayaputra While entering the shrine of Udupi though my mind was full of Lord Krishna I could not but move my eyes to the Astamatha mathas of Udupi how nicely they are guarding lord and how systematically they are governed this discipline was induced by you Vasudeva as you were called by your parents You are born on Vijay Dasmi day in 1238 AD to Nadilaya Bhatta and Vedavati in Padaka near Udupi of Karnataka state even before you were born a disabled person climbed Dhwajasthamba and announced that Bhagwan Vayu will be born to a couple to revive Vedic dharma in Padaka Kshetra You excelled as child in learning and wanted new lessons every day. You had a fine voice and purity of expression even at the age of 5. You once questioned a great scholar of repute Madhitiya Shivabhatta and gave lucid answer to the great Puranic of the time quoting from Puranas. On one occasion you corrected your father and gave the meaning of the word happy with you your father appreciated your presence of mind and scholarship and sent you to guru tota tilaya to learn vedas upanishads and puranas though you learned the lessons at correct time spent more time in the field you were very good at play you had very good physique you were vayu in running hanuman in swimming and bhima in weight lifting not happy with your attitude of playing guru tested you in learning scriptures amazed with your intelligence and knowledge guru gave up testing you as an incarnation of mukhya prana vayu you wanted to renounce at 11 got into monastic life by achyuta pragna an ascetic of repute in the year saumya near odipi you became purana pragna from vasudeva at the time of sanyas became ananda tirtha when you defeated a group of experts in tarka you became madhvacharya only when you learned that madhva a name traceable to the vedas you showed that vedas talked about you as madhva and used that name madhvacharya was the name by which you were later be revered as tatvavada you traveled across the region and visited many places like anantasayana kanyakumari rameshwara and sriranga Everywhere you went you discussed your tatvavada which did bring in many friends and foes alike your firm belief was to dedicate your life to the spread of ultimate truth in this direction you wrote a commentary on the bhagavad gita you established dvaita school of vedanta called your philosophy as tatvavada meaning realism and it became one of the three most influential vedanta philosophies for you there are primarily two tatvas or categories of reality swatantra tatva independent reality and asatvatra tatva dependent reality ishvara the independent reality for you and universe is the dependent reality the created universe consists of jiva and matter 
you see a fivefold division between Ishvara, Jiva and matter. These differences are between matter and matter, between matter and Jiva, between matter and Ishvara, between Jiva and Jiva and between Jiva and Ishvara. This difference an invariable and natural property of everything. You see the world as five faceted, five elements, five senses, five sheets, five sense organs. That is why it is designated as prapancha or a perfect pentad in Sanskrit. Prana, there is the fivefold division of prana, apana, vayana, udana and samana. Five forms of God, aniruddha, pradyumna, Shankarshana, Vasudeva and Narayana. Your ideology is Vaishnavism. Narayana alone is the supreme independent Godhead. The entire Vedic corpus hymns only his praise. The names of deities invoked therein such as Agni, Indra and Varuna are but various spulinga of Vishnu. Monotheism alone is thus the quiet essence of Vedic literature and not polytheism. For you, Ishwara is the cause of the world, an omniscient, omnipotent, omnibenevolent, just and wholly transcendent being. Ishwara both has forms and is formless and is both qualified and unqualified. Lakshmi is ever liberated and has a divine body and is a power of God. For you, means to liberation is through selfless devotional service to God or Bhakti. Theory of the three gunas, varieties and various degrees of perfection in individual souls. A sattvika jiva cannot become a tamasa, nor can a tamasa turn into a sattvika. Is a wrong notion and can change through Bhakti. You wish to tour Badri, made you take up the tour of North India once you visited. You took Maunam for 48 days and walked to your favorite destinations, Vyasa Hermitage at Vyasa Badri and the penance grew of Naranarayana. To place before them your Bhagavad Gita commentary and cherish. You traveled across the country and participated in public debates. This made many to follow you and get initiated as sannyasi. One such was eminent pandit, Shobhana Bhatta, who in spite of being great scholar, listening to your wonderful discourses, became your disciple and joined retinue. You had the habit of dictating and your disciples will write. You took up the task of writing commentary of Brahma Sutras and task of writing on palm leaves was given to your Mukhya Sishya Satyatirtha. Considered to be your great work as the Anu as the Anu Vyakhyana, a critical exposition. You as Madhva composed thirty seven works in Sanskrit, wrote your bhashyas or authoritative commentaries on all the ten Upanishads. You composed glosses on 40 hymns of the Rig Veda with its spiritual significance. You also wrote the treatise Bhagavata Tatparya, Teachings of the Puranas. Many topical handbooks were also authored by you to suit different occasions. A large number of devotional songs too were composed by you, which could be sung by your disciples while moving with you in groups. You installed Krishna found in the western ocean near the Udupi sea coast. On your second journey to Badri, you were stopped by Muslim soldiers. Boldly you crossed the river and went on to the other side of the bank. You were taken to the king, but on hearing your staunch belief in God, he became your friend and offered Jagirs but you declined and went forward. You always said one should cultivate strength of body even like strength of mind. It is impossible for a weak body to house a strong mind. So you strained 
and you trained your shishyas physically and also spiritually. Your shishya Upendra Tirtha used to silence the robbers with fierce fight on the way. You had miraculous and miraculous physical strength and your body was strong and adamant. Even to this day, the huge rock builder lifted up and placed in the river Bhadra by you near Kalasha bears witness to your Heracles strength. This incident is confirmed by the sentence inscribed on that stone. Once a fierce Bengali tiger attacked your sannyasa disciple, Satyatirtha, you resolved the tiger and sent him away with his tail between his legs. You are hailed as Madhavi Gopi in Radha Govinda's eternal Vrindavana at the feet of Krishna, an eternal relationship of service to the Supreme Lord. You wrote Mahabharata Tatparya Nira, Nirnaya after having darshan of Narayana and Vyasa at Badri and Shiva at Kashi. You also had a debate with elderly Advaita ascetic Amarendra Puri whom you silenced with your argument and scholarship. You showed muzzle power at Kurukshetra. You got a mound there excavated and demonstrated to your disciples the buried maze of Bhima therein and once again had it buried under the ground. You proved to the world that you were real brother of Bhima and Hanuman. Your contemporaries acclaimed rapturously you are muscle expertise. You had rich melody of voice. Your sweet music enthralled the audience at Goa. Your musical genius was a unique as your perfect physique and brilliant intellect. You were a Gandharva of rarity like your spiritual father and siblings. Padma Tirtha, a monk envious of your erudition and popularity, stole your works from the custody of Pejatya Shankaram Pandita in Kasaragod. You travelled to Kasaragod and defeated him in a philosophical debate. You were felicitated by Jaisema and it was written as Tattva Odhyota. Prajatya Trivikarma Panditacharya wrote Tattva Deepika after losing to you in a debate and became your disciple. On his request, you wrote Anuvakhyana on the Brahma Sutras. You completed Nyaya Vivarnana also simultaneously, dictating the same to disciples. You also commented on the Vedanta Sutra and quoted the Bhavishya Purana as the Rig Veda, Yajur Veda, Sama Veda, and Atharvana Veda, Mahabharata, Panchak. Karatra and the original Ramayana are all considered Vedic literature. The Vaishnava supplements, the Puranas are also Vedic literature. You composed the literary work of Krishnama Ratna Haranva after educating public, came out with Khandhartha Niyam Nimaya after giving discourses composed and penned many literary works and made your disciples to go ahead with your philosophical pursuits. Your four works on the Sutra Prasthana, the Vedantic school of Brahma Sutra, were Brahma Sutra Bhashya, Sarva Shastra Ratha Sangraha, Brahma Sutra Anuvakhyana and Anuvakhyana Vivarna. Principles of Interpretation and Structure forms this marvelous work. Your two works on the Gita Prasthana, Bhagavad Gita Bhashya and Tatpar Nirnaya reiterate that Bhagavad Gita is also an essence of Upanishad. Gita teaching is a synthesis of the teachings of Upanishads and Panchakaratra, that is Bhagavata Bhagavad tradition and expressions terms, concepts and ideas elaborated. In the Upanishad Prasthana, you wrote authoritative commentaries on all the principal Upanishads, but there is notable uniqueness, while all the others have commented only on three chapters of the Aitreya, 
your bhashya covers the entire upanishad of the aitreya aranyaka your three works on mahabharata and the bhagavata synthesize the teachings of itihasas and puranas they are mahabharata tatparya nirnaya mahabharata tatparya and tatparya nirnaya you gave it the status of nirnayaka grantha your nine topical treatises are concerned with epistemology and ontology they are vishnu tatva nirnaya vada maya vada dushana upadhi dushana mithya tatva anumana dushana tatva samakhyana tatva viveka parmana lakshana and vada lakshana all are excellent works of literature your seven works offer guidance regarding ceremonials and rituals regarding mantra and duties and practices of householders and mendicants they are krishna martha maharanva tantra sara sangraha sadakar smriti jayanti nirnaya om tat sat pranav kalpa nyas padhati and tithi nirnaya you wrote two devotional works one is a stotra and the other an anthology of compositions set to music and meant to be sung narsimha nakshastuti and dwadasa stotras 12 in number are all sung in various temples even today you even wrote kanduka stuti when you were a boy on a ball your nyaya sa padhati explains the daily routine duties of mendicants thithi nirnaya is a unique work on mathematics hardly you left any topic to explore you initiated many into sanyas your brother became sri vishnu tirtha the first pontiff of the present day sodha matha and subramanya matha shobhana bhatta received initiation by you and was called padmanabh tirtha others being padmanabh tirtha and narahar tirtha you established mathas and pontiffs of different mathas were rishikesha tirtha of palimaru matha narsimha atri tirtha of adamaru janardhana tirtha of krishnapura upendra tirtha of puttagi vamana tirtha of siruru vishnu tirtha of soda sri rama tirtha of kaniyura and adhok kasa jatirtha of pejavara all the property that you left as a legacy to your disciple pontiffs was just a casket for keeping the deities of daily worship a staff and a piece of cloth hanging from shoulders like a bag to receive alms and a krishna deity all deities given to the mathas were worshiped by you essence of your philosophy was a new line of thought to indian philosophy your position was originally called tattvavada philosophy of reality being established as dvaita mata dualistic school that establishes relationship between ishvara god and jiva soul you accept three sources of knowledge pratyaksha or perception anumana or inference and agama or vedic literature and hold that ishvara to be known through samanvaya vedi scriptural teachings is the path laid by many in collaboration with yoga you to believe that the vedas are apurishya or at anathad their truth is both eternal and an uncontradictory and encompasses all of its parts the samhitas brahmanas aranyakas and upanishads but your interpretation of the veda is such as to discover within you believe in knowledge through perception inference and scriptures is from a continuous process of hearing cognizing and realization of the scriptures one should know through surrender and knowing one should again surrender this awareness is the key to bliss what a grandeur in thought and action 
at the prime age of nine and seventy on the ninth day of the bright half of the month of magha in the kali year of 4480 you walked alone to badri while giving discourse on aitre upanishad you disappeared amidst flowers that were showered on you from heaven a rare and divine way of walking to your abode by back along with your father vayu no one cited you again can we forget you are your teachings the day on which you pre- proceeded to badri we celebrate it as madhva navami to even this day your nine teachings are Bhagwan Shri Krishna alone is the supreme absolute truth, one without a second. He is the object of knowledge in all the Vedas. The universe is real, Satya. The differences between Ishwara, God and Jiva, soul and matter are real. Jiva, souls are by nature the servants of the supreme Lord Hari. There are two categories of Jiva, liberated and illusion. Liberation, moksha, means attaining the lotus feet of Bhagwan Krishna, in other words, entering an eternal relationship of service to the Supreme Lord. Pure devotional service to Krishna is the only way to attain this liberation. The truth may be known by pratyaksha, direct perception, anumana, inference or logic, Shabda, spiritual sound or Vedic authority. Sri Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna.